What's up, my precious little pack, and welcome back to Vega Conflict. So, more information has come up about the Wraith Cruiser, and we can take a look at it in game. And I am a little bit disappointed in Kixai, but that's typical by now. And everyone keeps saying that it is the first Umbra ship to be released, the Wraith Cruiser. And in all actuality, it is, because this actually isn't an Umbra ship. The Phoenix isn't. Now, if it was an Umbra ship, what it would have is a burlative armor slots. They have two different types of armor slots, from what I understand. A standard armor slot and then a burlative. And this is effectively their shield. And the Phoenix lacks any. It has absolutely no boosted shields or anything like that. And something else that this little frigate has over the destroyer, I mean the cruiser, it gets bonus armor. However, that armor is effectively useless because it lacks the actual aberlative armor that the others have. So the race cruiser, it actually has the aberlative armor and things like that. We'll do a stats rundown in just a minute, but we're, I'm going uh, to just point a few things out. First being, before this had no alien resistance or anything like that, it got its resistances through the blood hunt. And something else, the void resistance still shouldn't be there again, but it gets plasma resistance. That is something that the race cruiser lacks. It has absolutely no bonuses at all. And this is the calling, this is how it interrupts your ships. And how it activates is when an enemy ship in range loses its shields or a burlet of armor, the ship goes into hunting mode, gaining bonus recovery and offenses to culling ships from combat. And I'll go over the details that it gets for the ablation details. But first, it's fire disruption, charge disruption, and cooldown disruption. This is a bit odd to me. Now, l let me explain. First, it, it has fire disruption, charge disruption, and cooldown disruption. Fire disruption means that it should block or stop a ship from firing effectively completely, so the other two would be null and void and they don't belong there. Unless fire disruption is actually the main one, and then these are the sub-effects of what happens when it is triggered, in which case then it takes 50% longer for their weapon to charge up and 50% longer for the cooldown. So it takes longer for each weapon type to fire, as well as gain increased weapon speed. However, the one thing that the Bastions have over this is their increased range, but it's not all that effective because, as you saw, it has an extremely heavy amount of... <coughs> it has a very heavy amount of resistance to the chain effect, which is what the... Bastions were known for having. Unless you had two or three like my extra ones that I never show in the fleets, which are actually equipped with all pulse cannons. And actually work extremely well. However, this is as it is right now. And from our understand as well, we will get no Xeno damage weapon types for this new group. Instead, they will have blight. So each previous one relied on alien damage being their top damage dealer. Well, this, will, well, this one will have blight. Let's go ahead and let's see what the abur the ablation detail is. Okay. When damage threshold is reached during combat, the amount of burlative armor will be returned to a burlative armor. Recovery to armor. Note that these are accumulated values, meaning it's the more components. With these stats, the greater damage threshold is needed to be triggered. Alright. Additionally, certain damage types can grant bonus recovery. Yeah, Blight will do that, we already know that. Devour recovery will restore a percentage of maximum aberlative armor on the ship when a ship is destroyed within weapon range. <coughs> I do apologize about my throat. But, 40 and 40. So does that mean it's restoring 40 aberlative armor hit points to the ship? Because if so, it actually has quite a bit that's restoring fairly quickly. 
And all of this just because it's fighting, and if a target doesn't have shielding or it destroys its burlative layer, it recovers its very, very quickly. However, something that I'm curious about is, since it is an armor type, unlike the shield counterpart, does it actually have the chance to recover it after it's been completely lost, or is it just like shielding and when it's gone, it's gone? Because if so, then I'm not going to class a burlative armor as exactly that burlative armor, I'm just going to see it as another shield type with absolutely no resistance to anything. Okay, let's give the rundown of stats. 1 hour, 17 minutes, 30 seconds worth of repair time for 9,300 hit points in comparison to the Bastion. 1 hour, 15, so it only has 225 more hit points and 2 minutes, well, 1 minute and something seconds worth of repair time. Longer. Wait, they're within the same class very, very easily. Cargo, however, it has quite a hefty amount more but not as much modifiers it does increase damage versus cutters altarians it has shield bypass however it only has alien resistance and it has 100 percent resistance to the blight nebula so from what I understand from that as well is it can go through the blight nebula and and take no damage unlike all other ships and it also has counter chain of 8 to deal with bastions. Ugh. Okay. First and foremost, that counter chain should never have occurred because just increase in damage versus Altarians was just fine. The counter chain would have been fine, just not as much because that is blocking everything up to and including the Xeno Echo Eclipse. Uh, not the Eclipse, the... Well, yeah, the Epsilon Echo. So, that was a bit disgusting on their part for giving it 8 counter chain, if I'm not mistaken, the... Yeah, they both have that. So, that's disgusting on their part because they said that they didn't want to reduce the effective lifespan of the previous year, which is the Altarians. And they're doing... <coughs> And they're doing precisely that with what they're doing right now. They're reducing the effective lifespan usage, and we're only two months into the Umbra faction, and we're losing more and more use off of our previous ships. And if they expected everybody to switch over to the Phoenix Frigate right off the bat because it was the new ship, I'm happy people didn't do that because, as we saw, Phoenix Frigate lacks the actual armor. It has no ablative armor slots. Yeah, it has no ablative armor slots or anything like that, and I don't see any additional stats for it anywhere. However, this one has three and three. It has three ablative armor slots, as far as I understand, and three standard armor slots. Phoenix frigate lacks, which is a mistake, because if it is an Umber ship, then it should gain ablative armor just like the others and it should regain it via increased armor and things like that. But I also think that they made another mistake, and that is with the armor health. And this is why I believe it doesn't have a burlative armor, because this is supposed to be the test ship and not many people play with it, and for good reason. But it has 15% increased armor health, and because the new burlative armor is exactly that armor, and not anything else, it's not a shield, and so that bonus would affect it. But now let's go ahead and let's take a look at each of the armors and what they do. Thonian armor. Repair time, 28 minutes. Mass, 1,575. Health, 5,515. Appellation details. It has an ablative recovery of 20. And no, we, and I don't know any of the thresholds right now for what you have to get to actually recover that. Well, that isn't quite true because everything that we've seen on <coughs> the Wraith Cruiser indicates that as you do damage, you'll just be recovering this aberlative layer. But first, you have to have aberlative armor right here to be able to deal with it. But level 1 stats, level 2 stats, and then you get a burlative tungsten and the counter 
well, the higher level of it. And yes, they have lower amounts of armor, but they weigh quite a good amount. And it's treated just like a shield as far as I can see, because it blocks a certain amount of defense, so a certain amount gets through the ship, and that is something that I see is wrong. <clears throat> If it's going to be recovering health anyways, and it's going to be the next new high tier ship, and its armor is classified as armor, it shouldn't be treated like a shield. It should truly be armor, and exactly that. First off, from what I've been reading on the forum, Cyrus does Ray test it, and it beats everything with the exception of battleships, because they stay slow down and they just keep it at range. Every other ship loses to it, as far as I know. And this armor, as you do damage, is restored, unlike the other one. But again, like I said earlier, I do not know if the armor is completely depleted, if you can restore it a little bit by a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. But we won't have to wait that long. But repair time... 22 minutes, 35 seconds, for 4,450 upper relative armor. So you'll be able to have 12,000... 12,000... well, 13,150 effective armor of the aber, of the upper relative armor on the ship for the cruiser if all the stats are correct. But again, I still have my problem with the defense of it only have 90% for being a relative armor. Again, armor is what tanks all the damage under the shield. Without a shield, it should be tanking all the damage and not allowing it to bleed through. So it should have two layers of armor you have to go through. And how it should have been more carefully balanced instead of having as much health as it has, I would have actually gone for about two-thirds as much health as what each of these have. So it would be easier to destroy the aberlative tungsten armor to get to the health underneath. But I would have made it so it didn't have that defense because it's not a shield type. It even is classified as armor, but it's being treated like a shield, so it is, as it stands right now, a shield. A shield that recovers as you do damage, which again is a mistake. Not that it, um, not that it recovers armor, that it actually is treated like a shield. It should be treated like armor, not have a defense, and you should have to fight through the health. However, it should have less relative health, so it becomes easier to rip through. Second. I do not know if it has resistance slots on the ship, so you can actually add your own resistances, but I have a way of figuring that out. First off, the mark upgrades are most likely already in place, and so the vast majority of everything we have should already be compatible with it, so if it can have resistance slots, we'll already know just by checking. But before we go and check, I want to go into specials, because we can check the magnetic collar. And each one is superior to the previous, as you would expect. Level 1 goes 40-40 with a 5 second recovery. Well, the Devour recovery. And then it is 60-67. And 80-80-10. And this is the amount of birdlative uh, armor that is recovered from what I understand when it destroys a ship. So remember when they it was mentioned that when they destroy a ship they would recover a percentage of the birdlative armor? Well, this is that. However, I am going to say that I actually like a relative armor more than shielding. It's being treated like a shield, but it's superior. And that is in the fact that it is armor, not a shield. First off, we only have shield bypass, and it's not classified as a shield, it's armor, so 10% will bleed through all the time. However, that means that additional shield bypass will do absolutely nothing to it, and you'll have to still fight through the armor. So this new faction is going to be very, very broken and overpowered in comparison to all previous tiers. However, from what I understand and see, as I said, they will not get access to the alien weapon damage type, which is Xeno. They will have their own called Blight, which will just further increase their overpoweredness because no previous group has resistance to it. And something else is, as you upgrade the Wraith Cruiser, it gains resistance up to 40%. But now let's go take a look at some of other stuff. Let's go see if we actually have any resistances, resistance slots. That should be Altarian only. All right. I have other resistors in here somewhere. There they are. 
Of course, it won't actually say. So we actually, I have no idea right now, because the two that I just checked have... Actually, let's see. I know for a fact I have... Okay. Right here, we can confirm it from the Axis... Actually, no, Xeno Division. From the Xeno Division's resistors, that we can indeed use them on the Umbras. So, that's one benefit to look forward to, is actually increasing armor resistance. And, because resistances affect armor and not shielding, this is also how you're going to customize your ships to be resistant to certain damage types. Of the standard damage types, not to Blight, or Xeno, or even Plasma. So, against Plasma and Xeno, you're going to take more damage against your standard armor and your burlets of armor, but again, only 10% is going to bleed through, and there's nothing that will be done as of right now that I'm aware of to increase that bleed through. So you should be safe under your shield, while under your burlets of armor. And I believe that's all I wanted to say about the ship. I believe we've gone over everything about it, and the fact that they all have the blight resistance, And if I'm not mistaken, because they started this tier late, it's going to be a short tier. It'll only have five ships again, which is fine. However, they do need to change the stats on the Phoenix Frigate to give it a single... to allow it to have the armor slots. Because as far as I know, like I said, the aberlative armor slots and standard armor slots are two different slots. And if they're not, it actually has, uses the standard slots, then the Phoenix, will be, the Phoenix will be just fine. We just have to wait and see. But that's going to be it for this video, everybody. If you have any additional info that I missed about the Wraith Cruiser, the Burlative Armor, or anything else from the Umbra faction that I may have missed, gone, uh, not gone over, or failed to address that has been brought up that I haven't noticed, feel free to call me out in the comment section below. If you have any additional information, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And as always, everybody, I'll see you later.